Hey guys, it's an absolute joy to be with you today. Um, let's pray. Father, I thank you for this time we have together. Lord God, I thank you for your blessings. And I, I thank you for the hard times, the tough times, the learning times of God. Lord Jesus, just help us to see your goodness even in those learning times and Lord God times are tough times are hard but we're always learning always growing if we pay attention to what you're trying to teach us help us to pay attention to what you're trying to teach us Lord the people who you're trying to make us into and God I praise you and worship you Speak to me, speak, speak to me, speak through me in this moment, in the name of Jesus. Your spirit overflow in my, in my heart today. Lord Jesus, let Rachel die and let Jesus live in me. Your precious, matchless, mighty name, Jesus, amen. Hey guys. I hope you're doing well today. Um, I was watching this wonderful sermon on holiness. It's called Back to Holiness. It's by Pastor Donnie McClurkin. And he was saying how we need to get back uh, to holiness and to, to walking and talking and what... Um, 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 being holy because the Lord says be holy as I am holy and I was uh, what he was saying was absolutely right uh, we need to be careful of where we go how we talk how we live so that others see Christ in us that is absolutely right and when I was but when I was um, thinking about it, uh, the Lord, like all that is absolutely right. Um, but what people need to know from you is all that is a journey. And today I'm going to talk about, this sermon is going to be called, Believe Me. And I'm going to talk about uh, the journey of holiness. And um, holiness is a journey. It is a journey to be set apart depending on where you are in your life. And I think when, I think hearing a sermon like Pastor McClurkin's wonderful sermon as it was, um, the conviction of the Holy Spirit can feel so heavy and you're like, oh my God, I'm not like that. I'm not, I'm not like that. I still have issues with my mouth and I still like things that I shouldn't. I still, uh, laugh at jokes that I shouldn't. I, I need to change, I need to do this. And yes, you do. Um, and the Holy Spirit will help you. But the Lord wants me to tell people, although we need to have holiness sight, holiness will not come overnight. Your life will be a journey, and I'm not saying Oh, I can do whatever I want. Holiness, holiness is a journey. No, but you, but you, what you need to take is steps towards holiness. And it will not come overnight. And that, that sermon convicted me so much. Uh, it was, it was not condemnation. It was conviction and condemnation comes from people and it's of the devil where conviction 
comes from the Lord. And what we're missing, I think, is the awareness of the Holy Spirit. And we're missing, um, I think um, we're missing uh, the respect for the Holy Spirit. And I think we need to get that back. But I'm here to talk about uh, the journey of holiness. And me listening to this sermon myself, I was like, oh my God, I am so far from this. And he said, and he said, don't worry, holiness is a journey. So now that you're aware of it, Rachel, you can take more steps towards it. And holiness is not just the outward stuff like no drinking, no smoking, no swearing, no all of that. But it needs to, all of that is important, it is, but it needs to start with inner holiness, inner separation of oneself. Um, because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And if you do everything on the outside, like you don't drink, you don't go to clubs, you don't swear, but, but your inner sides are nasty as all get out, that's still not holiness. Because I know a lot of people who don't drink, don't swear, don't do any of those outward stuff, but they're, you could tell their heart is black. Um, it's not good. They try and manipulate people using the word of God, or they try and do all that using the word of God. And that is not holiness either. Holiness is an inner working of separation that that starts on the inside but overflows to the out to the outward so the outward may say um uh, the um so it overflows so out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks and and I think that I think when you're when you're talking about holiness, you you first have to talk about the inner man, and daily we have to uh, ask for our inner man to line up with God's promises, and. This is hard to do, it really is, um, whatever your vices are, whether it's uh, swearing, whether it's drinking, whether it's all, whether, whatever it is, it is hard to do, and it will take the Holy Spirit to do it. And um, I was really ruminating on this sermon. I was like, Lord, I want to be holy, but I'm so far apart. How can you use me? If if that's what you want, I can't do it. And he said, got to believe me. I've called you for a purpose. I know your propensities, Rachel. I know what you struggle with. I know who you are. And some of those propensities I will use for, for my glory. Some of those things I I will use for my glory. Um, you know, it's it, like God is so God is so interesting in that he will use things for his glory that we wouldn't even think of. And he's saying that some of those um, 
of those things that you think disqualify you, they actually qualify you. She's, he's like, I will send you to preach in places where they drop F-bombs. And I need you to not back up. I need you to not uh, shy away from that. I need you to go into those places and preach by word. And I, sometimes I would need you to use language that they can understand. Now, I'm not saying that we should just do whatever and whatever, but I am saying that sometimes God will use things that we don't think he can use um, to win his people. And we need to understand that Holiness, although right, it's a journey. It's a journey and we need to we need to approach it as a journey. But but the problem becomes like when you're when you when you're a believer and you're participating in the, these things and you see nothing wrong with it. You see nothing wrong with it. And you, you're you not acknowledging that I'm on a journey. You're like, oh, I'm a believer. His grace will cover me. And that's that's true. It will cover me. No ands, ifs, or buts. Um, but saying that, um, it's still, you need to acknowledge that this is a journey I'm on. I'm trying with the help of the Holy Spirit to actually live holy, but it's a, it's a journey. And you need to actually be honestly trying and endeavoring and not being, not be flippant about what you struggle with. Not to say, oh, I swear, it doesn't really matter. He loves me anyway. No, 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 no. You have to say, this is um, a thing that I struggle with. This is a problem in my life. I'm dealing with it. I'm on a journey to, to fix it. And once people know you're on a journey, they respect you for it. But it's when you act like, like, you're so perfect and what you what you do, oh, it doesn't matter if I do this. It's just that it's just like when you're so um uh, uh flipping about it, that's the problem. When you don't care that you're doing wrong. When you go to church on Sunday morning and clubs on Saturday night, or when you drop F bombs in the parking lot on sa Saturday night and say Praise the Lord on Sunday morning, and you just don't see anything wrong with having one foot here and one foot there. That's the problem. But when you underst understand that you are on a journey, when, when you understand that I have this struggle, I have this propensity, I have this issue, but I'm on a journey and I'm constantly working to get to to get to a place where I don't have that struggle anymore. That's when when God can help you. And he also said something to me too. He said he said what he said all those things that I said about you in the beginning, believe me, I know what I'm gonna use in your life. I know what I'm going to get rid of in your life, but let not your your issues, whatever they be, they be, they don't cancel out your purpose. You do deserve to uh, be in that job. You do deserve to preach. You do deserve whatever whatever the Lord has promised you, because. He's God. He sees your inner person. He sees 
the person you're trying to be. And all, although we need to strive for holiness, we also need to understand that despite your journey, he is still using you and working some things out in you. And you need to be patient with yourself. In that, and the Lord said, you need to be patient with yourself, Rachel. All this stuff won't be gone tomorrow, but you need to be patient with yourself. Um, and I, yeah, so that's what he said. Believe me, everything that you are going through, everything that you think is an issue, um, I'm going to use or take it out of your life. Every struggle that you're dealing with, I'm going to use it to be a testimony to other people. And he's saying, that's what I need you to understand. And I need you to understand that holiness being set apart. I need you to understand two things. I need you to understand that it starts with the inner man. And then I need you to understand that it's a journey. And, and first, I need you to acknowledge that there are areas where you struggle with being set apart. And if there are areas that you struggle with being set apart, submit submit them to me and I will help you take care of them. And because like I said yesterday, the, the problem isn't um, uh, really that you have issues. We all have issues. The problem comes when you don't acknowledge that you have an issue and that you're on a journey, that you think that you're perfect and that that God loves you, loves you, which he does. But that love and that grace means you can do anything you want, treat people any other kind of way, do, do, do this any way you want. And the Lord's saying, no, you have to acknowledge that you're on a journey and you have to acknowledge where you struggle. And holiness won't happen tomorrow. It will take your whole entire life to be set apart and holy. But as long as you acknowledge where you are and you are conscious, consciously on the path to holiness, God can use that. But if you're stubborn and thinking that, oh, I got this, his grace will cover me. No, no, that's, that's not right. And he wants me to say that he loves you. He loves you and he understands where you are. But him understanding where you are doesn't negate the fact that you need to change some ways. And he will direct you what to change and how to change, but you need to understand that he loves you regardless of whatever, but you still need to submit to his will. You still need to submit to him. You still need to submit to the people that he's placed under you, and you still need to be willing to change, although his love will not, will, will remain the same you still need to be open to him changing you. And the changing is hard. The wrestling is hard. When you've been swearing all your life, it's hard to stop. When you've been drinking all your life, it's hard to stop. When you've been doing whatever all your life, it's hard to stop. And you have to understand that you're on, on a journey but if you have the acknowledgement that you're on a journey, that's where it begins. 
have to be, you have to acknowledge that yes, I'm not there yet, I'm on a journey, but I'm getting better and growing every day. And for those of us who are acknowledging that we're on a journey, the Lord says, woohoo, you're acknowledging that you're on a journey, that you're not there yet. And, but we strive every day to be more like Jesus. And every day that we acknowledge that we're on a, on a journey, we get better and better and better. And a lot of times we don't even realize how far we've come from a year ago. And Christianity to me, other than salvation, is about growth. Are you growing in God? Are you growing in your understanding of his word? Are you, grow, are you growing in your understanding of how to treat people, how he sees people? Are you, are you growing? And that's the key question too for your, for your journey to holiness is, are you growing? Are you learning? Or are you staying, staying the same? Uh, the enemy of growth is stagnation, I think. When you're not moving, not changing, that's an enemy to growth. When I say moving, I don't mean physically, I mean spiritually, emotionally. Are you moving? Are you changing? Are you getting better as you, uh, as you mature? And he, he really wants me to say that this holiness won't happen overnight. It will be a journey that will possibly take all your life. But the journey is worth it because you'll be getting better and wiser and deeper and growing in God, like I said before. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. Thank you, Lord, for teaching us. Thank you, Lord, for growing us. Thank you, Lord, for just, for just being with us. In the name of Jesus, amen. I know I said at the beginning of the sermon, this sermon is going to be called, um, Believe Me. Um, there are some things that God is telling you and he's saying, I need you to just believe me. I don't need you to know how it's going to get done. I don't need you to know why I've chosen you, but I just need you to believe me and believe my word for your life. And he's saying overall, archingly. While you're on your journey to holiness, believe me when I say who you are. Believe me that your journey to holiness doesn't cancel out what I've said about you. And what I've said about you, believe me, is saying believe me. And thank you, Lord for your word and thank you Lord for what you're going to do. I bless you and praise your name. what you want me on oh, is what I want for on oh, is what I need
Trans no hey transform it. Tears, tears, oh no. Transform us, teach us every day what you want from us. In the name of Jesus, amen. Okay, guys, I'll see you next week. Bye.